Hello, happy autumn equinox. So the book, The Stone of Light, a novel of ancient Egypt, Nefer the Silent, volume one, Christian Jack. It's an international best-selling author of Ramses. I, um, I don't know if we're going to get into this book, but I wanted to know what your thoughts were. So I'm just going to read a tiny bit and, um, you're welcome to let me know in the comment section what you think. Would you like to hear this novel? The Stone of Love, Volume 1, Nefer the Silent. Deep in the heart of Upper Egypt, desert lies a forbidden village. Balls, let's start again. <laughs> Deep in the heart of the Upper Egyptian desert lies a forbidden village where bands of artisans prepare the tombs of the pharaohs. Guarded by a handful of elite soldiers, the hidden city shelters the most precious of treasures, the Stone of Light, a legendary stone of magical power. When a devious military officer schemes to infiltrate the city and capture the sacred gem, his subversive plot is thwarted by an unlikely hero, a desert wanderer who falls into a maze of treachery and betrayal, desire and danger. Preface. The whole world marvels at works of art created by the Egyptians, from pyramids, temples, and tombs to sculptures and paintings. But who brought these wanderers, or these wonders, into being? Whose spiritual power and magic is it that touches our hearts? They were never the work of hordes of slaves or captive labor, but were created by brotherhoods whose select band of members were both priests and craftsmen. They saw no distinction between the spirit and the hand and formed a true elite who were responsible directly to Pharaoh. As luck would have it, we possess abundant documentary evidence about one of these brotherhoods, which for about five centuries, from 1550 to 1070 BC, lived in a village in Upper Egypt that outsiders were forbidden to enter. This village had an extraordinary name, the place of truth, set ma'at in Egyptian. In other words, the place where the goddess mat is mat, M A apostrophe A T, revealed herself through the righteousness, justice, and harmony of the work carried out by generations of servants of the place of truth. Situated in the desert, not far from the culture from the cultivated area alongside the Nile. The village was enclosed by high walls, had its own court, its own temple, and its own burial ground. The craftsmen and families lived there and enjoyed special status, owing to the importance of their primary mission, to create houses of eternity for the pharaohs in the Valley of the Kings. Even today, it is still possible to see the remains of the Palace of Truth by visiting the site of Deir el Medina, 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 it's a capital D-E-I-R space E-L dash M-E-D-I-N-A. On the western bank of Thebes, the foundations of the houses are intact, and you can explore the narrow streets that the master builders, painters, sculptors, and priestesses of the goddess Hathor walked along. Shrines, the premises belonging to the Brotherhood, and wonderfully decorated tombs emphasize the sacred nature of the place, which was also provided with reserves of water, granaries, workshops, and even alcohol, or it doesn't say that, and even a school. Hey, Theresia. Hey, welcome in. Happy Equinox, y'alls. I have tried to bring these exceptional people to life, along with their adventures, their daily lives, and their quest for beauty and spirituality in a world that sometimes proved hostile and envious. Safeguarding the very existence of the place of truth was not always easy and there were many dangers of all kinds, notably during the unsettled period when the story takes place. I should like to dedicate this novel to all the craftsmen of the place of truth who were guardians of the secrets of the house of gold and succeeded in passing them on in their work. Christian Jack. Ooh. How long is the prologue? <clears throat> I really can't stay and do it, but that's my little preview. Um, well, okay, wait, just 
like one more minute and I'm not even going to finish through the prologue. I don't know if we're going to read this book, but let me know in the comments what you think, if you'd like to hear more about this. But I got to get to getting. So here we are. Log. Around midnight, in the light of the full moon, nine craftsmen left the Palace of Truth and began to climb up a narrow path guided by their overseer. A hill overlooked the Place of Truth, the desert village where Pharaoh's builders lived, encircled by walls that guarded their secrets from prying eyes. Hidden on the summit, behind a block of limestone, May stifled a cry of delight. For several months, the charioteer officer had been trying to glean information about his brotherhood, or this brotherhood, whose task was to excavate and decorate the tombs in the Valley of the Kings and the Valley of the Queens. But nobody knew anything, with the exception of Ramses the Great, protector of the place of truth, where master builders, stonecutters, sculptors, and painters were initiated into trades that were essential for, Egypt, for Egypt's survival. The artisan's village had its own government, its own legal system, and was responsible directly to the king and his most senior minister, the Jati. May should have concentrated solely on his military career, which promised to be brilliant, but he could never forget that he had applied to join the Brotherhood and had been rejected. A noble of his high birth should not have been scorned like that. In his disappointment, May had directed his ambitions toward the elite corps corps of charioteers. There, his had been recognized immediately, and as a result, he had risen swiftly to an important place in the military hierarchy. Hatred had blossomed in his heart, though a hatred that grew with every passing day, every time he encountered that accursed brotherhood, which had humiliated him and whose very existence prevented him from knowing perfect happiness. So May had made a decision. Either he would decide all the secrets of the Palace of Truth and, use, Truth and use them to his advantage, or he would destroy this apparently inaccessible settlement, which was so proud of its privileges. To succeed, he must make no mistakes and arouse no suspicions. He had recently experienced twinges of doubt, but the servants of the of the place of truth, to uh, but the servants of the place of truth, to give them their official title, were nothing but or were nothing but contemptible braggarts who pre whose pretended powers were no more than an illusion. And as for the closely guarded Valley of the Kings, surely it only preserved the corpses of monarchs frozen in the immobility of death. By hiding himself in the hills that overlooked the forbidden village, May had hoped to spy upon the Brotherhood's rights, which no one spoke of. His disappointment had been in proportion to the effort he had expended. But to, at last, it had happened. Ooh. Hey, yeah, it's got your name in it. That's awesome. Code awesome. All right, so you guys, let me know what you think. Would you like to hear that? I'm going to stop it right there. It seems like a really juicy spot. I got to get to getting and have a good day with Dixie. And then we're going to do some readings tonight. You can find us over on 1111 Code at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Come get a reading or just hang out. I love yous. I wish you wonderful autumn equinoxes. And um, yeah. I'll see you Mwah. until then. Let me know what you think. You want to hear this one? Let me know.